it's about time we addressed the gross incompetence on behalf of the blue team. Now, I'm not even gonna blame Principal Technologies here. Their testing methodologies were uh, vastly askew. Enabling XMP profile on only some of the platforms tested, ultimately crippling AMD's Infinity Fabric dependencies, using stock AMD coolers, but allowing Intel counterparts to run on beefy Noctua's because that's fair. Originally testing the 2700X in game mode, this was a burning sack of garbage. But when we understand the context here, what truly went on behind the scenes, you can't help but pass the blame to Intel. They paid for this report. This was a commission-based review Principal Technologies put together. And the problem I have with it is twofold. Not necessarily that they paid PT, but that one, the negligence of PT went virtually unchecked by the commissioning party. It's both parties are to blame here, but I think Intel is like the last step here. And then two, said party proceeded to publish the study anyway, knowing very well that the results were askew. They were very wrong. In fact, some benchmarks were so obviously incorrect that if you know anything about any relatively new hardware, I mean, I can't see how this could go unchecked. It's it's so blatantly obvious that it, it's either gross negligence or it's outright fraud. Oh, and by the way, Intel just gave us independent reviewers the middle finger. All right, so here's my beef, and we're gonna be as ideologically consistent as possible here because I've been playing devil's advocate for quite a while with this story. Uh, it's part of the reason why I haven't published anything to date uh, that with the hurricane also backed things up, but uh, this is the original article here. Now, I want you to put aside any notion regarding bias and whether or not this was paid for. Let's pretend this was an independent review by, say, a popular tech YouTuber. Let's use Brian from Tech yes City as an example. At first glance, nothing looks too weird. I mean, that's what I immediately thought when I first came across it. Now, just to be clear, this is an extremely thorough report, right? 23 pages in total and probably more comprehensive than most, if not all, benchmarks you'll find on the web. They paid attention to the finest details, save a few instances. For example, GTA 5 settings, uh, you know, that data is completely omitted here for some reason, but it's laid out it's extensively, actually, transparently in nearly every other case. They show step-by-step -step benchmarking techniques, especially in scenarios for which no built-in benchmarks exist. This was the case for PUBG. So the fact is, you guys take for granted the fact that we objectively report our findings and we do so with the information that we have at hand because we aren't paid to say what we say in these reviews and we aren't paid to unfairly compare products from different companies. For example, we would never compare an 8700K or a 9900K to a 2700X with game mode enabled. This feature was designed to bypass issues pertaining to Threadripper CPUs, so in a NUMA or non-uniform memory access config, the operating system can isolate the two die controllers directly linked to the memory channels to reduce corresponding latency, and that's a big issue in general with Ryzen. So in the case of games, certain titles suffer roughly 5% or so frame rate disparities when TR CPUs bake in their native states, which is why this NUMA legacy mode was implemented in the Ryzen Master Utility. But in the case of the 2700X, legacy mode can severely cripple the chip by effectively cutting its core count in half. I mean, in the case of, let's say, Ashes of the Singularity, PT revealed a nearly 50% margin which is absolute BS. I mean, my own testing in this exact same config revealed a frame rate nearly about 50, it was about 52, uh, which is actually almost on par with the 8700K. And this is more or less an AMD title, so we shouldn't be too surprised. We aren't accusing PT of being paid off, by the way. We're not saying that they're intentionally skewing results, but we don't expect them to be completely clueless with regard to the settings they're enabling. I mean, if Intel hired them in the first place, they've got to know kind of what they're doing, right? or maybe not. So case in point, the Ryzen 2700X is one heck of a competitor for the blue team, and they know it, which is why I expected Intel, in all reality, to fall back on this gross negligence apology tour. But no. You see, when Principal Technologies was initially called out on this, they went back to the drawing board and retested with game mode off, and they've had several subsequent tests to fix quite a number of things, uh, but at least they acknowledge the mistake. I like that. But Intel put out a statement along the lines of, you know, the data is consistent with what we have seen in our labs. They're referring to the initial PT report, by the way, which was the one that was complete garbage. This all ties back to the issue with paid or commission reviews to begin with. I'm questioning the integrity all around from Intel at this point. I've never worked with them directly, so I have no, you know, hands-on first-person experience with their marketing strategies, although uh, apparently people have been told weird things in the past. But I'm willing to say this, that's a, just a shady, shameful move. Now, I'm not referring, by the way, to the benchmarks themselves. To be completely honest, 
we see this garbage all the time, right? NVIDIA tried to pull a fast one with the way in which they presented their RTX cards. I called that crap out right when I saw it. And look what we have now, lackluster performance from an expensive generation of GPUs. When you're willing to omit entire axes from your data, we've got a problem. You're probably trying to hide something. That's what a lot of us were saying. But when you're willing to pay someone else to review this stuff and then stand behind blatantly fraudulent and or negligent data, you're double layering the academic dishonesty dump truck, my friend. Look, when these companies pay for work, you'd better believe they want it done a certain way. So I, I find it just difficult to believe that Intel simply approached this company, that, who I haven't heard of to date, until now, said, hey, we'll pay you for these benchmarks and uh, yeah, we'll see you next week with the results. And then just walked away with the metaphorical sealed envelope in hand. That's a joke. These companies, especially the big ones, want control. That's what they're paying for after all. And that's the problem with commissioning a series of benchmarks to push out to the community before any of us, the independent reviewer base, can get our hands on them and review them without breaking an embargo. You're inviting unwelcome scrutiny to the table, which that's not all necessarily bad. Bad, but you're calling it to question your own integrity at the same time. And that's why I started this entire thing with a hypothetical. Pretend this was a report by your favorite YouTuber. Again, I was sticking with Brian from Techia City just because I love Brian, he's a good guy. So some of these benchmarks may not have looked all that strange. Certainly the ashes of a singularity test, and we'd have called them out on it right away, relating it to some unintentional error in the game settings or BIOS config. We would have blamed negligence, Brian would have gone back and fixed his mistakes, and that would have been the end of it. But if we suddenly found out that Brian was paid by Intel to perform these tests, we might attribute the odd benchmarks to something other than a slip-up. That's my point. That's why money being mixed up in reviews like these, especially ones that go in front of independent reviews, it's just a big issue in my book. Principal Technologies will struggle to regain its integrity in the gaming community, I imagine, and for good reason. I mean, there's nothing wrong with taking money from a company for a commission-based project. But the way in which they ran the tests shows that either A, they don't know what they're doing, or B, they intentionally did what they did, which would be a bigger no-no, and that they're willing to work with a company as disgusting as Intel in a time like this when AMD is right on their heels. I mean, arguably, AMD's in the lead from a value perspective, so Intel feels the pressure. Also, assuming we do contribute these issues to gross negligence overall, which I don't have a problem doing, why did they commission them in the first place? Why wouldn't they just send these CPUs to reviewers earlier in the schedule? Or how about this? Why even pay a company to assess these products at all? By the way, I don't have 9900K or 9900X samples sitting here. I don't, I don't get anything ever from Intel directly. I usually get things from motherboard manufacturers and I don't even have stuff from them. So I can't even confirm those aspects of the, the PT uh, report. But what I can tell you is that based on what I know through my testing with the 8700K and the 2700X, there's a, there's a bunch of crap wrong with that initial report, not just with the way they tested it, but with their results, obviously the two go hand in hand. So why not run internal investigations Intel? Keep everything nipped and tucked. Tech companies do this all the time. You do it all the time, by the way. It's called RDT, R&D research and development and testing. The testing phase is important. We all know not to trust the benchmarks released by the same companies releasing the referencing products, right? That was the case with Nvidia, the same way with AMD and Intel. But maybe Intel took this to heart and said, well, maybe we'll just pay another company to do it and it won't look like they're our benchmarks. And uh, there we go. I mean, maybe they chose a company that didn't even know how to benchmark gaming CPUs, graphics cards. I mean, games in general didn't look like they really knew what they were doing. I mean, they were pretty consistent. It looked like they've done plenty of tests before, but when it comes to testing games on a computer, it wasn't as straightforward as I thought it would be, and it was not as accurately done as I thought it would be. In fact, there were several things, again, completely wrong with it. So I'm just questioning the whole thing. It doesn't really make sense to me, and I think it was a really shady move on Intel's part, not necessarily PT, because again, they've gone back and they fixed things. Remember, they were paid by Intel to begin with, so if this was a payoff for them to skew results, PT's gone back and broken that phase of the contract, if that, again, is the case. I, I don't really think it is, I think Intel just took advantage of the situation. That's that's what I'm willing to say at this point. Based on what I've seen, the other reports from uh, my colleagues out there, it looks as though Intel purposefully chose this company, uh, kind of just gave them a, a rough sketch of what they wanted, and then hoped that they would do something dumb like this. I hope that they would enable game mode, use 64 gigs of RAM and downclock RAM on AMD platforms, but keep it overclocked on Intel platforms. I mean. Some of it is, again, a little too obvious, but I'm not going to crucify PT because they have gone back and they have fixed things, and that's why I kind of wanted to wait before I released my own 
video regarding this topic because I wanted to see if PT would go back and correct the issues. We all make mistakes. These are pretty big mistakes, but they corrected them nonetheless. Intel, however, is standing by the initial report, and I think that is just a bit ridiculous. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give this one a thumbs up if you did. If you like the background, the, the new studio of sorts, give it a thumbs up for that. I'd appreciate it. Thumbs down for the complete opposite feeling, or if you hate everything about life, you guys click that red subscribe button. If you haven't already, you can join us to be, uh, become a member. You can get special icons and badges and just be fancy in general, and we'll catch you in the next video. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.